and issue an abort if necessary. FTS is armed. Falcon 9 is in startup and is now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. All right, 50 seconds to go. Everything is ready for an on-time launch today. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Copy, go for launch. Ground teams are ready and the crew inside Dragon is ready. 30 seconds to go Nine, until launch. Seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Mission and liftoff. God speed, Endeavor and crew 2. Copy, 1 Alpha. Endeavor launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on crew 2 now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. The vehicle is pitching down range. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls on first stage performance so far. We are T plus 30 seconds into the second rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Falcon 9 will be throttling down the nine Merlin engines shortly here in preparation for in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And there's that call out for the throttle down. Maximum dynamic pressure max Q is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. So throttling down does help us pass. Throwing down helps us pass through this period, which should be coming here shortly. Q. There's our call out that we have just passed through max Q. Stage one throttle up. And one we can Bravo. Now... Copy one Bravo. All right, one Bravo is the second abort mode on the first stage. The first stage continues to fire for two minutes, 35 seconds. One and a half minutes into today's flight. Falcon 9 now traveling at more than 1,500 miles an hour. MVAC engine chill has started. All right, the engine chill for the second stage single Merlin engine has started. About 30 more seconds of the first stage firing to bring our four astronauts into orbit. Now from here, coming up in about 20 some seconds, we're going to have three major milestones. We'll have shutdown of the nine Merlin engines. We're beginning to throttle them down. We will then get stage, stage separation. One, throttle down. And then we will get ignition of the second stage engine to propel Dragon and the Falcon 9 second stage into orbit. Hey, Two Alpha. Copy two alpha. Confirmed. Acquisition signal right. In the position. And we have ignition of the second stage. You see the green flash of that T Teb fluid? The ex extent expansion nozzle on the second stage Merlin vacuum glowing that bright red that we like to see. Good performance on the second stage so far. And on the left side of your screen, we saw the uh, exhaust of the second stage engine streaming past the first stage as the grid fins are coming out. We also briefly had a view of the lights of Central Florida in the background. Currently, the first stage is continuing to coast up to Apogee. It's unpowered. It'll reach a peak height and then begin to descend back down toward the Earth's atmosphere where it will light three engines to slow down in preparation for what will be a landing burn on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the grid fins are deployed. Right now, the first stage Dragon pulsing. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. We're pulsing the thrusters. Signal Bermuda. Copy, nominal trajectory.
And we hear a call out from the crew, nominal trajectory. So we're beginning to move the first stage into position so it can do the entry burn. Four minutes, 15 seconds into today's flight, Second stage propelling our four astronauts up the eastern seaboard. We'll continue to fire. It's a six-minute burn to deliver the astronauts into orbit. We'll wait for a cue for a good orbital insertion after that. Meanwhile, we will be hearing uh, check-ins on the vehicle's trajectory and performance, as well as check-ins with some of the ground stations as it passes over uh, throughout uh, the six minutes of the second stage firing. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copy nominal trajectory. Getting good views of both the first and second stage from the onboard cameras. Acquisition of signal, boss. The New Hampshire tracking station has acquired the second stage telemetry signal. Meanwhile, the first stage has reached apogee and it's now beginning to descend from uh, a height. It's currently about 167 kilometers up. And in a few minutes, we will get the entry burn of the second stage, of the first stage. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Right on cue, those check ins on the second stage performance. Once a minute, everything's looking good on PHP that second stage. Propulsion is nominal. Stage two continues to climb. The vehicle now exceeding 8,000 miles an hour at an altitude of about 124 miles. And just about one minute from now, we will begin the entry burn of the first stage. That will consist of lighting the center engine and then shortly afterwards, two more engines for a three engine burn to slow down the first stage in preparation for entering the Earth's atmosphere. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copy nominal trajectory. Another check-in and the crew confirming they're hearing the same thing. The vehicle exceeding are about to exceed about 10,000 miles per hour. Meanwhile, first stage down at 90 kilometers, getting ready to relight three engines for the entry burn. Stage two FTS has saved. We've got the center engine ignition and there come the two side engines. Now this entry burn will last about 29 seconds. It's gonna significantly slow down the vehicle in preparation for hitting the denser part of the Earth's atmosphere. Entry burn complete. We're down below 35 kilometers, continuing to look good on the first stage, heading to the Atlantic Ocean for a landing on the drone ship. While well, second stage is less than a minute away from cutoff. Stage two in terminal guidance. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. Shannon called out at the back end of the stage two, a few seconds until cutoff. Invec shutdown.
Dragon SpaceX launch escape system disarmed. Launch escape system disarmed. Copy. Dragon SpaceX nominal orbit insertion. Copy. Nominal orbital insertion. All right. The Falcon 9 second stage has done its job delivering our four crew into orbit. You hear the applause here in Hawthorne. We're waiting to get a video signal back from the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. And the view from the onboard camera, we saw it just briefly. It looks like first stage on the drone ship. Getting views of the Dragon trunk. So the first stage is on the drone ship, successfully landed. And more importantly, second stage is in a nominal orbit with the Dragon spacecraft getting ready for some important events coming up, Gary. That's right, about two more minutes, the Dragon and the second stage of the Falcon 9 will be in a coast phase. It'll take that long until the spacecraft separates from the Falcon 9. Of course, both uh, now in a nominal orbit. It's great to see some of the views of the Earth as it passes by over the North Atlantic Ocean. All right, we're getting shots of the crew in orbit. I'm looking uh, for that zero G indicator. Can't seem to see it in this shot, but we have a minute to go until we have uh, spacecraft separation. Dragon traveling at nearly 17,000 miles per hour at an altitude of 124 miles. Again, the four-person crew of Endeavor is in orbit right now. Less than 30 seconds until we have spacecraft separation. Ten seconds to spacecraft separation. We should hear words from the core here in uh, Mission Control Hawthorne once we have successful separation. Thanks for flying our first flight proven crewed Falcon 9. See you side, crew two. Thank you very much. We're great. It's glad to be back in space for all of us, and we'll uh, send our regards to crew one when we get there. Thanks. Absolutely stunning views from both inside the cabin, seeing the excitement of our four-person crew inside Endeavour, and watching Endeavour drift away from the camera on the second stage as the Earth passes by on an orbital sunrise. SpaceX Endeavour, we... There's... And Endeavour, you uh, cut out a little bit there. If the question was, uh, if you're go to open visors, you are go to open visors at this time. Copy and work, thanks. All right, 13 and a half minutes past liftoff. The crew is in orbit, traveling at nearly 17,000 miles an hour. Well, Gary, I don't know about you, but uh, that was a great countdown. <laughs> Everything sounded great. Right on and time, Dragon's actually a little ahead of time. Nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. 
Got a good orbit out of Falcon 9, and first Copy stage landed on thanks. the drone ship. And we're in the sunlight over the Atlantic Ocean with the Dragon spacecraft. All in all, a great day. I think everybody's jealous of the crew in orbit right now, John. Uh, these views, even just from the cameras, are absolutely stunning. It was great to see our crew members uh, get into orbit. They already performed successful checkouts of the 12 service section Dracos around Dragon. The next uh, milestone will be the deployment of the nose cone. That'll be about a five minute process, but that'll expose the forward bulkhead Dracos and prepare them uh, for checkout. There's a phase burn. There's five major burns that are needed to get the Crew Dragon up to rendezvous with the International Space Station over the next 23 hours. And so that first phase burn is coming up real soon in about uh, 35 minutes, actually less than 35 minutes. And Jesse, I don't know if you could see the zero G indicator, but I was told it's a penguin. I'm trying to look for it. I'm looking for it too. Keep an eye out on that left hand screen. Meanwhile, the uh, dragon is configured for, for a nose cone deployment. We'll stand by for uh, when that sequence starts. The nose cone itself opens uh, just beyond 90 degrees, about 105 degrees to expose the forward uh, bulkhead Dracos. Those forward bulkhead Dracos, four of them at the very top of the Dragon will do the bulk of the work when it comes to firing the Draco engines for minutes at a time to increase the uh, Dragon speed, altitude, and phasing to catch up with the International Space Station again over the next 23 hours. Look Meanwhile, what we can do. Look what we can do. A great morning for humanity, a tough morning for those who are flat earthers. We just witnessed the launch of the SpaceX Crew Dragon, the latest NASA mission. Four astronauts, two American, one Japanese and one French, now on their way. And we can hear them. They're going to the International Space Station. Yeah, CNN Innovation and Space Reporter Rachel Crane is live at the Kennedy Space Center and also, also with us, CNN Aviation Analyst and Pilot Miles O'Brien and Michio Kaku, who is the professor of theoretical physics at City, of, uh, City University of New York, also author of The God Equation, The Quest for a Theory of Everything. All right, Rachel, let's start with you here. Uh, this has been very exciting, but just explain to us exactly what we've been watching. Brianna, today was an incredible day here at Kennedy Space Center. This was the third crewed mission of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft. Uh, and they were all, it was pretty historic here today because this Falcon 9, the rocket that spacecraft Endeavor flew on, it had all kinds of scorch marks and Eight. soot on it before Seven. it took off today. That's because it flew Five. back in November Four. with Crew Three. 1. So it was a flight proven rocket. One. Also, the spacecraft that flew today, Endeavor, it too had already flown to space. Uh, it took that historic flight. Uh, nearly a year ago for Demo 2 with Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley uh, taking that first crewed flight of Crew Dragon to the International Space Station. So that had never been done before, a flight proven system, the, the Falcon 9 booster as well as the spacecraft uh, having already flown to space. And of course, NASA, SpaceX, they had to do thousands of checks to ensure that it was in fact safe for the crew to board and fly today. But as we all saw, uh, today's countdown went off without a hitch. It was a gorgeous day here at Kennedy Space Center. And those astronauts on board, we've already gotten to hear their voices and see them in spacecraft endeavor. They're making their way to the International Space Station right now, traveling over 17,000 miles an hour. They'll rendezvous with ISS in about 24 hours. Uh, but, you know, they're very busy on that journey to the the International Space Station. There's about five burns that will take place in order to get them um, 
get them to, to rendezvous just precisely right. Uh, also, they have to sleep on board. Uh, and we've just gotten, uh, we've just seen that the zero G indicator is a little penguin. That's sort of a tradition that the astronauts that are on board, that they decide what that zero G indicator is going to be. Uh, we don't know the story behind the penguin yet, but with demo two, uh, with Bob and Doug, it was a little uh, sequin dinosaur. I don't know if you remember the last one. It was a baby Yoda. Uh, so, and as you know, today it's a multinational crew that is on board. We have two NASA astronauts, Megan MacArthur, who's in fact the wife of Bob Behnken, who took that demo two flight. She's actually sitting in the same seat that her husband flew in on demo two. Uh, Shane Kimbrough, he is the commander. We also have a JAS JAXA astronaut on board, uh, as well as an ESA an astronaut on board as well, Thomas Pisquet uh, and uh, Ashi um, Hishido. So multinational crew and something that's unique, everyone, there's always a lot of interest in the food, astronaut food. And I have to tell you guys that I had the opportunity to taste some of the food that uh, Thomas is bringing up with him. When you have a multinational crew, they have the opportunity to bring some of their, their own uh, cuisine on board. You know, these specialty meals that are made, they're not eating them every day. But I have to tell you, I have the, I have the little packets right here. Mm. <laughs> Thomas is bringing beef bourguignon. Beef Bourguignon is going on board right now, that Crew Dragon. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're having some very fancy meals, also a crepe Suzette. I had a, I tasted them both, and I got to tell you guys, yeah. they were not bad. It was pretty tasty. So they're getting some fancy meals for sure. Crepes in a bag. Well, we've come a long way since Tang. I don't think there, there's any doubt about that. Uh, Miles, you know, you were with me. We watched the, the first man SpaceX launch together. This, as Rachel said, is the third with a used rocket and a used capsule, or as NASA likes to say, previously owned. Um, how, how significant is this moment? Well, it's a cream puff, of course, John, no question about it. But it's significant for that very fact you just mentioned. You know, the shuttle program was supposed to be reusable, and in some respects it was, but it never really delivered on the promise of reusability in a way that made the cost of getting to space cheaper. It was a finicky vehicle. Yes, the orbiter came back, but it required all kinds of work to get back to space. Sure, the solid rocket boosters could be reused, but they had to be fished out of the water, and that was a, a very difficult and time-consuming process. Elon Musk and SpaceX are proving reusability in a way that truly drives down the cost of access to space. So that's really a, a big deal because it opens up low Earth orbit to all kinds of enterprises we've been hoping for for a long time. That is to say, those of us who like space uh, and makes it accessible in a way that we couldn't have imagined. It used to be we, we the, the back of the napkin uh, cost of getting anything to space, John, was $10,000 a pound. Well, Elon Musk is driving that cost down, and it's really exciting to see it. Professor, uh, you actually talk about the cost, and it's really interesting, right? It, it's what, like one pound that you carry into space is your weight in gold? I, I'm bad at math. What's the equation there? And what's the significance of that? Well, yes, it's $10,000 per pound to put you in uh, near-Earth orbit. That is your weight approximately in gold. And that's the reason why back in the 1960s, the, the moon program faltered. It consumed 5%, 5% of the entire federal budget. 5% of every dollar you paid in income tax went to the space program. That was unsustainable. That's why this is a game changer, because it's going to drop the cost of space travel by a factor of maybe two, maybe five, opening up, opening up outer space for commercial ventures, for mom and pop, space tourism, maybe even you and me. And so this is a game changer. We're entering a new era. Now, if you were to take a car and junk it after just one use, cars would be very expensive. But that's what we do to rockets. We dump them in the ocean after one shot. But reusable rockets, as was mentioned, is a game changer. It's going to drive down the cost and open up the heavens for commercial ventures, for space tourism, and for you and me. Miles, this is, it is the new era, as the professor is showing there, this new era of space travel. Crew 2, this Crew 2 mission. Uh, is this better? I mean, cost-wise, clearly it is. Writ large, is this better? Yes, it is. You know, among other things uh, worth pointing out here, Brianna, is it's a lot safer. You know, we lost two crews in the shuttle era, and uh, there was no realistic way for them to get out of a spacecraft uh, in an emergency. 
Uh, this particular craft with the, the capsule sitting right on top of the stack, good place for it to be. Nothing can hit it on its way up, no debris from other parts of the rocket. But it also has a, an escape tower, so it can separate itself from the rocket itself on the way uh, to space to allow the crew to get back safely. So that ejection, that crew escape capability is a hugely significant difference. The idea of separating the human beings from the cargo is a good idea. The shuttle idea was let's put it all in one thing. We'll make a giant space truck. We'll put the payloads in the back, put the crew in the front. Uh, in the end, they were trying to do too many things at once, and it ultimately made for an unsafe way to get to space. So it's cheaper, uh, it's reliable, and it ultimately is, you know, in the end, the most important thing. Yeah, it's huge. So important. Miles, always wonderful <laughs> to watch the these with you. Uh, Rachel, thank you so much. And Professor Kaku, appreciate your expertise as well.